And Yakum Gatwich is a model of South Sudanese descent who is known to our hundreds of thousands of fans as the Queen of Dark. With her deeply pigmented skin and her strong sense of self, and Yakum has turned adversity she has faced in her life into a powerful global message. Breaking down conventional stereotypes of beauty, welcome, and Yakum. Gatwich to Bradshaw Live. Your background is South Sudanese, you're African. Yes. When did your family immigrate to the United States of America? In 2007, I was 15. That's when we migrated to America from Kenya. How mm -hmm. did you make it from the Sudan to Kenya? All right, so my family left South Sudan in 1993, right before I was born. My mom uh, flees South Sudan in case, you know, there was a war. So my mom flees South Sudan and went to Ethiopia in 1993. And then I was born in Gambela, in Ethiopia. And then from Gambela, when I was six months, we went to a refugee camp called Dima, which is also was in Ethiopia. And that's where uh, most of my childhood, you know, um, I grew up there. Can you describe to me what it was like being in a refugee camp? I came to America and I'm just like, you have a girl, like you take a lot for granted. And without even knowing, because like you never know the struggle of going to bed, not having food to eat. You never know the struggle of sleeping next to my mom and holding me and not knowing that I might be, you know, the rubber might come in and just hurt us, you know? And then just like every night when we sleep in our tent and my mom holding, because she was a single mom with her five children, you know, holding all her children in her arm you know, hoping that nothing bad happened every single day. And, you know, waking up, her waking up in the morning and just hoping that today is not going to be a tent that's going to be burned down with her and her kids in it. You know, having that thought as a mother, that was something my mom had to go through over and over again. And it's like, I knew how hard it is on my mom, you know, not having my father there, not having anyone there. And just every night her going to going to sleep with fear, of, you know, hope, you know, thinking that she might lose her children. She might not, my her children might die out of hunger or whatever the case was. And you had five siblings. You were one we, of we five. Had five. There were six of us to begin with. No father. No father. And she lost two of her children in the process of, you know, leaving South Sudan and walking months. She was eight months pregnant. Right? She's about to pop. She was eight months pregnant and walked months from South Sudan to Ethiopia. And then on the on the way there, she lost one of uh, one of my siblings, which I didn't know. I've never met her. And then in refugee camp in uh, in Dima, she we lost another my brother. He was uh, he had kidney issue, like he had kidney uh, sickness, and we lost him. And then there's four of us left. And, and what did you do while you're in? Did they give you school? There's different schools. The school where, where if you are a refugee with money, your kid go there. If you're a refugee with no money, your kid go to the public school, right? And that's where I went. Where do you get money? You know how we use wood to cook, right? Right. So, so some people that don't want to go to the forest and get the, cut the wood. So my mom would go and cut the wood and then sell the wood to the people that have money. And that's how she was able to make some type of money, for, you know, for us. So you immigrated about 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. How was your mom smart enough to figure uh, out of all the refugees to get her and her children and killed them out of there with, from so from a refugee woman. camp chopping wood and selling <laughs> it just to you know what, put some food on the table to get this whole family here. What'd she do? So the UN were there, and then they have this thing. I think we would call it the lottery, right? They put your name, and then you get picked. And then if you get picked from the one, you know, one out of blue moon, if your family get picked, then you come to America. 2001, my sister got picked, my older sister, the one that lived in Buffalo, New York. At the time, she was 15 and she was engaged, right? And then uh, she, got, she got told she and one other person could come to America. And my mom was like, okay, so you and your husband need to go to America and then right. start the process of bringing us. So uh -huh. then she came to America in 2001 and she started the process, something called Mother Farm to bring us to America. And uh, they had a host family in Buffalo, New York, who was able to uh, to help them with the process. And then three years later, she's like, the process is gonna take way longer in, Kenya, in Ethiopia, so you guys need to go to Kenya. So then we jumped on the bus, and then we went to bus, we went to Kenya, to a refugee camp called Kakuma in Kenya in 2003. And then, then you know, the process just kept dragging on until 2007, 2007, they was like, okay, you guys gotta prove. My you came mother, as refugees as well? Yes. And where did yeah. you come to live? In Buffalo? With your sister? Buffalo. When you came here, did you have a concept of the racism that you were going to encounter right. here in the so, United States? When I think about racism and colorism, was something as a kid that I didn't experience back home, right? The only thing I was worried about, or my mom was worried about, was our safety, right? 
clean water to drink, you know, food to eat. It wasn't like, oh, I feel like I'm out of place, you know, because the thing is that I grew up around so many different people, right? And uh, the, the United Nations, majority of them that came to the refugee camp were white, right? And then I grew up in Ethiopia where I seen pe people from Ethiopian country, they lighter than me, and even though in Kenya. So I knew that there was different type of people around the world. And my, right. the way my mom raised me, it's like, you're not the only kind. There's so many different kind of people. So I knew, like I knew that. So coming to America as a child at age 15 and just being hit with colorism and racism. And I was just like, I did not expect that. How would I put this? Like just kind of experiencing a different kind of struggle that I wasn't prepared yeah. for. Were you excited to come to America? You say, oh my oh, God, my struggle is over. It's over. I'm about to come here and be a big time supermodel, buy a right. mansion, you know, live the American dream. The way America was placed back home is like it's right. heaven. Because, you know, right. they say you fly and then, you know, I've never been on a flight before. So they say you fly and you get on the flight and you fly and you go to heaven. That's what America is, at least. <laughs> what was the reality here. of coming here as a refugee versus your thoughts of going to heaven from the refugee camp? <laughs> know English at all right mind you like my education you know like I didn't know English because it's like I barely like I was 15 and they put me to seventh grade you know at 15 I right. should have been because my you know my education level was not where it should be right and then it's like so they put me to seventh grade at 15 and um you know I'm a very friendly person right so I'm, I'm outgoing I'm always a, a happy child I'm trying to make new friends and I'm you know and in Buffalo New York there's not many Sudanese people there's not people that look like me but me having that mindset that yeah, you, you're black, you know, African-American. You look like you could be Ethiopian, like, you know, you're white. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, this is my first time seeing an Asian person. Okay, you, where are you from? Like, I'm that right. type of person that want to know, you know, where you're from. And then the kids weren't like that. You know, a kid weren't like that. I just got, you know, kids started bullying me. What was the bullying you experienced? So just kids, like, making fun of me at school, you know, being too dark or so many black jokes, right? right. From black kids, from white kids. And I'm just like, I was so confused because I'm like, how can you make fun of me when you're a black person? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, what makes you so different from me? So I would come home and cry to my mom. You know, my mom just being the wonderful mother she is. She would always just give me that word of affirmation, just reminding me that you're beautiful. Don't listen to what they say. And then for so long, of course you're going to say that you're my mother. Did you think you were ugly? Did they make yeah. you think you were ugly? Oh, it damaged me so much that I considered about bleaching my skin color. I was so depressed you're for gonna a long period of time. Color? I consider that. Cause I wanted to just fit in. I just wanted to just fit in. I just wanted to be like, okay, you know what? I want boys to find me attractive. I want to just, cause you know, there's these little kids, 15 years old, walking the hallway, holding boys' hand. And I just, I would come in a cafeteria. I would sit on the table and a bunch of kids would just get up and leave. It got like, it got that bad. I'm like, I have some type of disease or something. So one day my niece was like, auntie, why are you so dark? So I took her to a park. She's like, you can't come with me. My friend would run away from me. It's not even about her, it's the fact that she was born in America, right? And just having this American beauty standard of what beauty is supposed to look like, right? She was what, like six? How close did you actually you say I considered it? How close did you come? Oh, I, I bought the products. I bought the products. I you bought, bought the, the products. Beauty. Who stopped you or why did my you stop sister, yourself? My sister, my loving sister. That's who stopped me because she, her herself, she bleached her skin color. So I bought the product and she already had some product. She sit there and have a long talk with me and told me that if, even if I bleach my skin color, you know, I would look different from the outside, but I know how I feel from the inside because she says she regretted. She's like, I right. wish I could go back to the way my skin was. When did you start to feel comfortable and confident as mm -hmm a dark-skinned woman mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that I'm beautiful. So I stayed in Buffalo, New York for two years, and then we moved to uh, Minnesota in high school. You know, I moved to Minnesota, and mm -hmm. a large population of Africans in Minnesota, right? Somalians, Sudanese. And I just felt like I was home. Like, I just, I was just around people that knew, oh, you're Sudanese, hey, what's up? You know, didn't look at me right. any differently. I had a, a friend group, right? These people truly want to be my friend to, you know, not to make fun of me, not to try to clown me or throw some black jokes. They just want to be my friends. In uh, 10th grade, 11th grade, I decided that to build a community around me that appreciate Nyakin for who she is. And then that's when my healing began. That's when my confidence started. Little by little, every morning I wake up and look at myself in the mirror and just remind myself how beautiful you are, how blessed you are. Like you came from a refugee camp, from nothing. So how you can let the opinion of these little kids or anybody I started working on my self-confidence, self-love. Because when I was back in refugee camp, I was a happy child. You were a happy child. Have in the nothing. Amazing. I was a happy, Amazing. Happy, Amazing. You're in a refugee camp. You're a happy kid. And we barely have nothing. We probably right. wouldn't have food to eat before I go to sleep. But I was just so happy. And I came to America, land of opportunity, the land of freedom. And you're I was unhappy. just like, 
not happy. Was there a time when you said, I want to go back to the refugee camp? I'd rather be oh, in the Oh, yeah. Tent? I told mom I want to go back to D. I told my mom, like, can we go back? And I was like, what? How'd you get the concept, even back in the refugee camp, that you wanted to be a model? I don't know. Like, this is what happened. My mom would tell me some story, right? As a kid, right? We use, we use clay to build toys, right? So she said, the way I would build my toy, my toy would have on some heels, a little cute purse, that I just always have love for fashion. And deep, deep down, I just knew that I'm meant to be in fashion one way or the other. It's amazing. It was like in you. Yeah, it was just a passion of mine that I, I have inside of me with that feeling that I can accomplish that. When you came to America, you said to your mom, I want to be a model. Did that start mm -hmm. in Buffalo? Did that start in Minnesota? Oh, I came to America and I told mom I want to be a model, but it didn't start it because I just didn't feel beautiful. And right. I'm like, models are supposed to be beautiful. I would watch an American Next Top Model and it barely see anybody that looked like me. And I was like, maybe people that look like me are not meant to be models. And I was like, I didn't feel beautiful. I didn't feel worthy. And I'm just like, yeah, that's not for me. I'm gonna go to school and be a teacher. Until high school, 10th grade, 11th grade, started working on my self-confidence and just started reminding myself, this is something you were so passionate about before you came to America. Why you let an opinion, opinion of others stop you? And then from that point on, I did my first show, which was in, uh, what's it called, St. Cloud State. You know, they have these events called African Nights. They will have uh, people, a designer, you know, they're going to school to be a designer, walk. And then one of the, uh, my tutor asked me, he's like, yo, I need you to wear some of my clothes. And I was like, wait, what, you me? Why? She's like, because you're beautiful. Like I, you know, so then I was so nervous, but I loved it. So then I graduated high school and I'm, I have, I'm, I'm gonna go to New York and model, you know? And um, I couldn't afford living in New York City, right? But my sister's still in Buffalo. So I wanna stay with my sister in Buffalo, New York. And then I would take a train or the bus to go to New York City. And then for a year, two years, nothing. No agency wanna sign me. What were they saying to you? Uh, we have someone that look like you already. You're not tall enough. Um, your body is not really shaped the way a model body is supposed to shape. Um, how can you tone down? Mind you, I was 99 pounds. Did you ever want to give up? Yeah. First, it was like these kids bullying me and not me not being comfortable in my skin color. And then now, I feel like I got a little bit of confidence and I try to pursue my dream. Now is this industry turning me down. You know what? I don't think I'm meant for this. Let me go back home and go be a teacher again. <laughs> so I came back to Minnesota and decided to go to school and get my um, education, you know, degree. Uh -huh. So I went to school and I was teaching at an elementary school. Literally, my life was all, I'm like, I'm good. This is what I need to do. Right. After a year, I was like, okay, you know what? Modeling is your passion. So I'm like, don't completely give up. Do, a, do it as a hobby, because I love taking pictures. You know, I love being in front of the camera. I feel like I have a message that I want to say. And for me to say that message is through pictures. And I feel like I can relate, I you know, so and then I just started doing modeling on the side as for fun. Right. I wasn't going to pay for it. it was, I don't think it was going to be anything, a career or anything like that. So I just started doing it for fun. I would take pictures with local photographers and then we would do a photo shoot and then I'll put it up on my Instagram and write a caption about my experience. Me, you know, not being comfortable with myself and just sure. telling the world that I'm here and I'm okay with the way I look. I don't care if you accept it or not. So it was, it was just a motivational caption that I would put up for myself, just to remind myself right. how far I've come. So how'd you take off? My photo went viral. <laughs> just on Instagram? On Instagram. Which photo two, is this? One of this picture, we did a concept called Different Melanin, which we had about 30 girls, were all black women that came from different shape. They were really, really light skin and really, really dark skin who happened to be me. The last uh -huh. girl, you know, she was, she's very pale, but she's black. So we're right. sitting next to each other and somebody snapped a picture of us. And then that picture, like the way our skin color contrasts, and that picture just went banana. I went to sleep wow. with 2,000 followers and I woke up with 30K. 28 Literally, overnight. Overnight. 30,000 followers overnight. I was like, what is happening, you know? What do you think that says about society? There's a lot of people in this world that accept me and okay with the way I look. So what brands now have you been modeling for? And I've worked with L'Oreal, amazing, you know, company. I work with Fenty, I work with Annabelle, I work with- So and now just, your, just, your dream from the refugee camp came true. Came true. Amazing. Came true. Although, you know, the discrimination against, you know, black girl model in the model right. industry is still there. Now it's like, I'm delivering a message out there through my platform that I didn't know I have. Now I have, I have a voice, I'm using my voice to just, Remind little girl that went through what I went through, little Yakims out there, that you can do this. You come from a refugee camp to refugee camp to America, go through being bullied, go, to, go through depression and make it here, you know? Now, your modeling nickname, I understand, is now the Queen of the Dark. I assume you're proud of it and feel great about it. 
amazing about it. Coming had, from not less than 10 years ago, you want to bleach your skin. Yeah. And what is your involvement in the George Floyd protests and the Black Lives Matter protests in Minnesota? Were you involved in yeah. that? So I, uh, I went to a couple of protesting and then I also did a couple of interviews just to talk about how I felt about the situation and how injustice it was. And then being a creative of being a model, I was like, I need to do more. Tell me about this eight minutes and 40 seconds project. What is that? So I, uh, me and one of the photographers came up with a concept where I did a photo shoot, you know, contributing to Joy Floyd and, you know, just holding this picture. And I posted it on my Instagram and just wrote a message of how I felt. And I was wearing a red dress, which uh, represents blood. Are you a U.S. citizen now? Not yet. <laughs> but you're a lawful resident. I am. I am a okay. resident. Wait, where can people follow you and your work? So I'm on uh, Instagram, Queen Nya Kim Official. I'm on Facebook, which is Nya Kim Got Ways. I'm on Twitter. So even if you just Google my name. What's coming up? Any amazing projects we should be looking out for? When I was back home, I was 15. I was in refugee camp and um, I had my period, right? I, I was with that time of the month back home and uh, didn't have the didn't, didn't have, have the right. You didn't have female. female. Ex exactly. And yeah. every time I had my period, I would saw my pain, you know? So I feel like well, I want to have a nonprofit position where I could go back home and have these products and give it to these girls. Be like, hey, this is what you need when you, you know. So that's one of the that's one of the way that I want to give up. Because have yeah. you started this organization? That's an amazing. I'm organization. working on it. I'm talking to a couple of people about it. That like, is something back. that that people would sign up for. Yeah. What's your American dream? Mm. So my American dream was I wanted to come to America, became a supermodel make a ton of money and buy my mom a mansion, buy my mom a Lamborghini. <laughs> Actually, being in America, my American dream changed. It's not all about the money, the fancy car and stuff like that. My American dream became where I just wanted to give back to people, you know, the, give back to where I come from, you know? Not only take care of my family, but give it back to, to where I come from. Thank you for coming on. And Yakim Gatwich. Thank you I for having you. me. Uh, you are the American dream coming I from nothing. And, and look at you now, right? <laughs> Anyways, well, uh, best of luck on your career. I, I, you don't need it from me. You're already there. And congratulations on all your great success and future Thank success. Thank you so much. And, and thanks Thank for coming you. on. I appreciate it. Thank you for